Good morning, church. Good morning. Say good morning, church. Good morning. Amen, amen. I'm Pastor Mark Claiborne. I'm the pastor here at Lewistown United Methodist Church. And my goodness, I want to welcome you to our time of worship. Psalm chapter 98, verse 1 says, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Glory, hallelujah. It's such a blessing to see everyone here in the sanctuary. We give thanks for those who are watching uh, the service online. I do pray that everyone feels the Holy Spirit moving in this place today, and I pray that you can experience the love of Christ, because we all know that love lives here. Amen. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. If you're watching online through our YouTube channel, we ask that you click the, the thumbs up icon. Uh, you can leave us a message, leave us a comment, let us know who you are, where you're watching from, and how you like the worship service. For those who are here in the sanctuary, please take a quick moment to fill out your attendance pad and pass that over to your neighbor. Amen. So, beloved, as we begin our passionate worship service, may the love of Christ, the compassion of the Holy Spirit, and the power of God always be with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we are led into our prelude by Miss Mary Fran. Miss Mary Fran, it's all yours, dear. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to our church service. Our God has given us everything that we need. May this amazing God continue to be our guide on our Lenten journey. Help us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus. We welcome the chastening direction in our lives as we worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. Please stand for our opening hymn, number 710, Faith of Our Fathers. <clears throat>
standing for the call to worship. Let us turn our minds from human things. Let us set our minds on divine things. Our faith in Jesus saves us. We will deny ourselves and take up our cross. Our faith in Jesus <clears throat> saves us. We will lose all that we may gain all. Our faith in Jesus saves us. You may be seated. <clears throat> Please join me in the prayer of confession. Guiding Lord, even though we hesitated on our Lenten journey, we vowed to come with you through all the trials and fears toward the cross. Today we face the challenge which true commitment brings. Are we willing to offer our whole selves to you in service? We would like to think that we can do that, but we are aware of how many times we have turned away from service and instead focused on our own desires. Remind us again of the commitment you would have us give if we are to become disciples. Forgive our stubbornness and fears. Lead us forward, gracious Lord, up these steps toward the cross. Amen. My words of assurance. <clears throat> The journey of discipleship is never easy, but you can be assured that you will not be on this journey alone. <clears throat> Place your trust in Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Before we go into our special music, we'll have an announcement by uh, Ms. <coughs> Tracy. Yes. Amen. So good morning. I just wanted to let you guys know that we are having an Easter extravaganza on um, March 24th. So I will have a donation board set up in the hall out here. If anybody would like to grab a donation, that would be greatly appreciated. If not, we would still love for you to um, just pray for us and pray for the children's ministry and for the kids that are to come. Um, but this will be out, and all donations are due on the 17th, which is also St. Patrick's Day. So um, if that helps you remember. So yes, yeah, so we have this, and I think that was, I think that's it for me. Amen. Thank you, Tracy. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a hand clap praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Tracy does such a good job with the children and, and setting up all of the, the uh, upcoming programs that we have for the special holidays and stuff like that. So we are truly blessed. We are truly blessed. Um, at this time, we're going to have special music by the Lewistown United Methodist Choir. Amen. Thank 
Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, the choir, to the choir, amen. What a blessed song, what a pretty song, amen, amen. Um, before we go into our pastoral prayer, um, there are a couple announcements. Um, last week we had mentioned um, that uh, Brent King was missing. Um, he was on a fishing trip up in uh, Harrisonburg, uh, Pennsylvania. His body was found um, last Sunday, so we ask that you continue to keep that family uplifted in prayer. Um, it's just a really, really sad, tough um, situation. Um, they did put out a GoFundMe um, uh, account, uh, which they were trying to raise like $10,000, I believe, for the funeral <coughs> services, but they were also asking if you could give um, for the two little kids that he had um, and his wife. They had just purchased a, a brand new home. And so uh, last that I had checked uh, was yesterday and it was up to 61,000. Um, so we give thanks for all the people who have donated. Um, what a blessing, what a blessing. So please keep that family uplifted in prayer. Please keep the, Win the Whedon family uplifted in, in prayer in the passing of Mary Whedon. Um, her funeral will be um, this Saturday coming. Um, as Tracy mentioned, we have the Girl Scout cookies for sale. Um, also, I received a card from the Linton Study group. Oh my gosh, they blessed me with this. This was on my desk this morning. It says, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Coming from Psalm 129, uh, verse 8. And my sincere thanks, God bless you. And it says, Pastor Mark, we, we thank God for bringing you to Lewistown United Methodist Church. And we thank you for all the love and care you give to your sheep. We love you, the Lewistown United Methodist uh, Church Lenten Study Group. Amen. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, all of you. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. And um, the Lenten Study Group is doing well. Amen. It's doing well. That's, can we give God some praise for that? <laughs> Amen. So they will continue to meet um, on Tuesdays uh, throughout the whole Lenten season. Um, also, there are more announcements in your bulletin. Please take a look at all of those. Um, and uh, the people who are on the prayer list, please keep those folks uplifted in prayer um, as well. Do we have any other announcements or joyous concerns we want to lift up in prayer? Um, let's start on this side. We'll start with Celeste. No, I'm talking to Barbara. Oh, 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 okay, okay. It's just the last day to order Easter flowers, so the envelopes are out there on the table. The last day to order Easter flowers, and the envelopes are out there on the table. Amen, amen. Uh, can you raise your hands again? Yeah, Miss Linda. I want to say Bill Good is now in Citizens and has been. Uh, Joyce Sigler is scheduled to move into Citizens tomorrow. And uh, they're, they're both moving along, and Mike is doing well. My husband, Mike, he's, he's doing well. Amen. So. We will continue to keep them all uplifted in prayer. Thank you, Miss Linda. Uh, Mr. Ken. Mr. Ken, did you have one? Okay, uh, Uncle Ronnie. Yeah, I want to thank everyone. Uh, you know, I had my brother-in-law, Delmar, speak to his wife, uh, Barb. Well, Barb passed away. Appreciate your prayers and everything. And my sister, Junie, comes away. She's doing better. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks, I'll have her back here. But I thank everyone for their prayers and everything. Amen. We'll keep you uplifted in prayer and your family as well. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Ronnie. Um, you have a couple folks over here. Uh, Joey. There's a sign-up sheet for uh, Sunrise Breakfast. So I'd like to have a list up so I know how much food to get. Okay. All right. And so, Joey, it, is that just for the men? I know last year they were saying that. Uh, yeah, we're going to all right, so uh, for sunrise service, um, Joey and the men will cook breakfast again this year. And so the sign up sheet, please, men, uh, sign up if, if uh, you're able to help. Thank you, Joey. I have a request for everybody to put extra prayers in for Miss Ruth McKinney. She had a disorienting episode happen, happen to her on Friday night, and they took her to the hospital for observation. She's back home, and she called me yesterday evening. She just didn't know where she was or what time it was or, or anything. And so uh, we want to keep her in our prayers. 
Amen. Please keep Miss Ruthie in your prayers, um, as well as Jim Grimes as well. Um, Chris? I wanted to thank everybody for keeping me in prayers while I battled the flu. Um, I'm feeling better. I'm getting there. <laughs> but I'd like to ask for prayers for my great niece, Octavia. She's seven years old. And they have found several things going on with her. Um, they have, she has some fluid uh, behind her one eye. And they're trying to figure out how to take care of that. Plus, she has liver disease. And um, they first were going to do surgery. And now they're trying to figure out if that's really the best way. So, um, and then my older sister, Linda, she's just struggling with a, a lot of things with the family, with her kids, and um, with Octavia, because Octavia is her great-granddaughter. Just keep her in prayer, because she's having a really hard time with that. Amen. We'll keep them all printed in prayer. Thanks, Chris. Uh, any other prayer concerns or announcements? Uh, we got Joanne over here, Mr. O'Dell. Oh, my head is there. <laughs> We're going to give Mr. O'Dell some roller skates. <laughs> Um, just prayers for Bobby Miller. He's not feeling well, so I know uh, friends behind me are probably wondering where their pew buddy is this morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's keep Bobby uplifted in prayer. My goodness. Uh, Miss Joyce, did you have an announcement? Yes. Um, I'd like to ask my prayer for Joseph Mallory. Um, he's in my neighborhood. He's uh, having some problems with his neck. He's very sick. And also, um, a birthday, happy birthday to my son Mark, who is officially has a birthday this year, February 29th. <laughs> my goodness, he was born February 29th. My gosh, and his name is Mark. Mark Anthony. Oh my gosh, yes, he has an awesome name. My goodness, <laughs> my goodness, praise be to God. Uh, any other announcements uh, or uh, prayer concerns we want to lift up? Um, I just want to uh, ask for prayers for Tom. He, hopefully he's on his way home today. He went to uh, Kentucky for our sister-in-law's funeral, so he better come home today. Yes, yes. yes. continue prayers for the Boggs family uh, in the passing of Miss Faye. Um, any other prayer concerns we want to lift up? Yeah, Charlie. He's coming. My lovely wife, Sharon, has a birthday tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Happy birthday. Oh, my goodness. How old? Uh, <laughs> Older than you, Odin. Younger than you, Odin. Oh, ah, <laughs> Younger than you. <laughs> Amen. Well, we hope you have a happy birthday tomorrow. Thank you. All right. And Charlie's going to make sure of that. Amen. Amen. Any other uh, prayer concerns or Joyce uh, announcements? All right, let us remember that the prayer of the righteous availeth much, and that when there is no prayer, there is no power. When there's little prayer, there's little power, but when there is much prayer, there is much power. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. As we Continue to please lift up all of our members uh, of this church, the ones who can make it out, the ones who are homebound. Please pray for those folks. All of our organizations, please pray for them. Please pray for this pastor. Also pray for the Lewistown Fire Department across the street and the Lewistown Elementary School down the street as well. As, and keep those kids uplifted in prayer as well as the teachers and administration and uh, even the parents. Pray for them as well. So gracious God, we come to you this morning with humble hearts and thankful thoughts of you. We thank you for the time that you've allowed us to come together and worship. We give thanks just to have the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. You're so worthy of all the praises. 
your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. And so as sure as we have breath in our bodies, we come praising you, O oh God, and lifting up the name of Jesus. When this world shakes us up and turns our lives around, we can be sure that you are the only one who can put everything back in order. And so we put all of our trust in you, O oh Lord. So, give, so we give thanks to you and thank you for always uh, being by our side, never leaving us nor forsaking us, for keeping all of your promises and being true to your word. You are omnipresent. You are omnipotent. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are such an amazing God. And so this morning, we, we lift up all of the concerns from our prayer list, all of the concerns from the people who are watching online, and we ask that you provide our every need, that you make a way for our breakthrough. We have the confidence in you because you are a way maker. You are a rock in our salvation, and you can do all things but fail. And so we come asking that you restore the health of those who are sick, that you give strength to those who are homebound, that you give shelter to the homeless, that you give people the power to reject temptation and overcome addictions. Give us all hope that you will be our bridge over troubled waters. Give faith to the faithless and provide restoration when needed. You are the only one that can take control of every situation. And we give you thanks for your complete dominance and how you reign. When we, when we face trials and tribulations, we ask that you give us strength to sustain us through the turbulence of life's ups and downs. We ask that you teach us to see everything and everyone through the lens of Jesus Christ and allow us to show compassion and love to everyone that we come in contact with. We ask for your forgiveness of our sins and we ask that you help us to become more committed to serving you and living our lives for you and only for you. We continue to pray for every nation. We continue to pray for world peace. Lord knows we need it now more than ever. We pray for the President of the United States and the leaders of this country. We ask that you give them wisdom to make the right decisions for all of mankind. We pray that all of the glory, honor, and praise is returned back to you. We pray this in Jesus' precious name, who is the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand, those who are able, for our hymn of preparation, which can be found on page 338 of your hymnal, uh, where he leads me. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. And the words will be on the screen.
stand. You may be seated. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. You see, God is expecting us to use all of our gifts, all of our talents, and all of our influence to serve others. We must realize that what we have been given comes from God and should be used to glorify God. When we put this in our lives and in our daily walk with Jesus, we become more faithful stewards of God's grace and in its carious forms. We cannot do anything without God and God needs us to stay humble in remembering this so that Christ's living is not in vain. The reason that this church is able to do so much outreach ministry throughout the community is because of the faithful stewards that we have here in the church. And so we give thanks for all of you and your commitment to serving without hesitation. We are blessed. Let us continue to grow in the knowledge and in the love of God and in our giving as a reflection of the love that God shows us as we now give God's tithes in our offerings. For those of you who are watching online and would like to give, you may do so by sending in your offering to Lewistown United Methodist Church at 11032 Hassan Bridge Road, Thermont, Maryland, 21788. Will the ushers please come forward as we are excited and delighted to give, for God loves a cheerful giver. We will be blessed with the selection by Miss Mary Fran as we take up our offer. Amen. Please stand, those who are able. now join us in our prayer of consecration. God of boundless goodness, we have come to this place this day to worship you with our songs, with our words, with our gifts, and with our whole hearts. We are reminded that our discipleship decision involves more than what we bring this day to the altar. It calls us to a place where a cross that is ours alone must be picked up and carried. This, more than anything else, is why we need the community of the church. 
Strengthen us, we pray, not just to carry our little cross, but to help sisters and brothers carry their crosses as well. In the name, In the name of the one who bore his cross for us. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first scripture lesson this morning is Psalm 22, verses 23 to 31. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. God's word for God's people. Thank you so much, Ms. Sharon, for reading that awesome word of God. Can we give our literatures a hand clap praise? (laughs) Amen. Excuse me. The gospel lesson is coming from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38, and thus was says the word of the Lord. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, that, indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words In this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. I want to put a tag on this text and I want to use a subject from which to preach. God gives us a preview of the coming attraction. God gives us a preview of the coming attraction. I believe that we all have been uh, to the movies before, amen? And one of the things that uh, is sure to happen before the movie actually starts is that you will see coming attractions. The coming attractions is simply a brief showing of some of the new things that will be coming your way in the very near future. Some of these new things could be coming in the next couple months or later in the year, but it's always something that you haven't seen yet. 
But one of the things that amazes me about the coming attractions is that you can't see them until it first gets dark in the room. Hallelujah. You see, when you first get into the movie theater, the lights are up. Some people are chit-chatting, and some people, like me, are already stuffing their face with popcorn, <laughs> while others are just trying to get comfortable and relax in preparation for the movie. But when the ambiance changes, the lights start to fade, and you are now sitting in the dark, and everything and everybody becomes completely silent, because now your attention is totally focused on the preview of the coming attractions. Well, my dear church family, sometimes God will show us some signs of God's coming attractions. You see, God tries to speak to us daily to give us a better understanding of what's coming our way, what we should do, where we should go, how we should live, and so on and so on. God doesn't verbally speak to us as, as to hear and hear it come in an audio of God in an audio of God's voice, although God can do it if God wants to, but God speaks to us with an inner voice of a mental impression. God speaks to us through God's word. God speaks to us through other people. God speaks to us through signs and wonders, by, by miracles, and through prayer. God even speaks to us through different events. You see, God can guide us through arranging or rearranging our circumstances to direct us, to change us, and to help us grow spiritually. But the problem is, we're usually too busy in our everyday workflow to hear or pay attention to what God is trying to tell us. My goodness. So God sometimes has to let our world get a little dark to get our attention and our focus. If your world gets dark enough in which you can't see, trust me, you will call on the Lord to help you get through it. Someone once said, in order for us to get to better days, we must first make it through the night. Lord, have mercy. All right. You may have heard this one. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. morning. Yes, y'all walking with me. Hallelujah. Okay, stay with me on this. Stay with me on this. We must work while it's still day because night is approaching when no man can Work. My goodness, my goodness. Some of y'all, I lost some of you with that one. But don't worry. Just continue to dip yourself in the mustard so you can catch up. <laughs> my goodness. You see, during our most darkest moments, we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and all of our soul, even when we have no clue where the Lord is trying to take us where the Lord is leading us or, or guiding us. We must keep the faith and believe that God knows what's best for God's children and that God will never leave us nor forsake us. My goodness. Y'all walking with me today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that is taking place in the service today. Now it comes time to bring forth your holy word. So I ask that you just take my mind and, and, and just take over my thoughts and only have thoughts of you right now. I ask that you take my mouth and use it as your mouthpiece to declare your holy word. Help me to speak it with power, conviction, and clarity. We don't want no one to leave here the same way they came in. We want your word to change us, to rearrange us, to make us better, to make us more Christ-like, because we were created in your image, and that's what we want to present. My goodness. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart always be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And let all God's children say, amen, amen, amen. So today's lectionary text starts off at, at verse 31, of course. But, but there are a couple verses before that in which uh, can help us better understand what's going on at this particular time in the life of Jesus and his disciples. So let me read from verse 27 to 30 so that we can see the bigger picture here. Now, verse 27 says, 
Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea and Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, who do you say I am? And they answered, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets, and he asked them, but who do you say that I am? My goodness, and Peter answered him, he said, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about this. Now, at verse 31, it starts off and it says, then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the, the chief priests and the scribes and, and be killed and, and after three days rise again. That first word in, in verse 31, then lets us know that Jesus did not begin to teach his disciples about the critical upcoming events until he was sure that they understood that he was in fact the Messiah. That's what Peter said. We know that you are the Messiah. You see, Jesus couldn't move, move forward in, in giving the disciples this critical information of what was coming, which is the preview of the coming attraction. He couldn't give this to them until he was sure that they could comprehend who he really was and, and why he came in the first place. I guess I'm trying to let you know, church, that, that the Lord would not take you to the next phase of your purpose and God's plan until he knows that you are ready to receive it and that you can comprehend it. The Lord is not going to give you more than you can handle. He can't put more on your plate until you're able to digest what you already have. Amen. 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 My goodness. I know that we are living in a microwavable world in which, which we want things instantly and, and immediately, but God is telling us, don't rush the process. Be patient and wait on the Lord. Be patient and wait on who? The Lord. the Lord. When Peter confessed to Jesus that, Lord, you are the Messiah, that was huge because that's when the new stage had been launched. And Jesus powerfully reveals that the son of the living God was going to be killed and raised again from the dead. And understand this, what Jesus is telling the disciples is something that had never happened before and never happened, never again will it happen to hear that, that the one that they have been following is going to be killed, the one that they, they love dearly, the one that, that they now believe is the Messiah, the one who is the, the Son of God. It's going to be crucified. That's disturbing news. But it's history in the making. Or better yet, his story in the making. Now, notice how Jesus is describing what will happen. He's being very direct when he's talking to the disciples. You see, beforehand, Jesus would use pictures and, and symbols and, and parables to explain. But now he's telling them in a simple and direct way, using direct words of, of what's going to happen. You see, he's not beating around the bush with this thing. He's not, he's not trying to sugarcoat it. This is the real deal, and this is, this is what's going to happen. Now, watch this. Jesus gives them the preview of the coming attraction, but he never gives them the plan of how they will get there. He, he tells them the end of what's going to happen. He never tells them the plan of how they're going to get there. You see, the disciples didn't know that they were, they were going to head back 
to Jerusalem. They, they didn't know that, that two of them were going to be ordered to go get a coat and, and bring it to Jesus so Jesus could ride it. They didn't know that, that a large crowd would be there shouting, Hosanna, blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. They didn't know that, that they would have the Last Supper. They didn't know that, that they would be in the Garden of Gethsemane. They didn't know that. They didn't know that, that, that one of them would betray Jesus and hand him over to be arrested. They didn't know that, that Jesus would stand trial before Pilate and then, and then be sent to Herod and then back to Pilate. They didn't know that, that this, this is where he would be sentenced to death. They didn't know that, that he would be led all the way to Calvary, that, that he would be beaten and spat on and, and mocked. They didn't know that he would be nailed to a cross and be crucified. They didn't know all that. All they knew was what Jesus told them, the end of what's going to happen. But God does this for us. This is one of the smartest things that, that God will do. God will, will give you the preview of the coming attraction. God will give you a vision, but God will never show you the plan of how you're going to get there. You know why? Because if God showed you up front, what you have to go through in order to get there, you quit. You give up. You throw in a towel. You say, thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> you tell God that I don't need all of this drama in my life, God. Is there another way we can do this? You would look for a different route to get there. And God says, no, 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 no. Before I can get you to the coming attraction, to the vision, to your plan, and my purpose, before I can deliver you there, I have to de develop you first. And all these obstacles are in place to strengthen you and to increase your faith. What I need for you to do is keep going, keep walking towards the plan, the purpose. Keep walking towards the coming attraction, trusting that I'm going to get you there and I'm going to be with you every step of the way. Isn't that what God does with Jesus? I mean, God promised to never leave us nor forsake us. We need to believe God and take God's word of what God is saying to us. But then something happens in the text that makes you say, hmm. Peter grabs Jesus and takes him to the side and begins to rebuke him. Now, he's going to rebuke the Lord. Now, Scripture says that he began to rebuke the Lord. That means he started to rebuke him, but he didn't finish. The word rebuke is an interesting word. It means to, to scold someone, to, to lecture someone, to, to reprimand them, or, or to get on them for, for doing wrong. Trust me, I know about repr being reprimanded. When I was growing up, my mama let me know when I stepped out of line. <laughs> Trust me. But listen, listen. How do you rebuke the one who has never sinned? The most perfect human being ever to walk the face of the earth. How do you rebuke that? You can't. You can't. And so what Satan does is Satan steps in and Satan shines Peter's spotlight on the idea of stopping the Savior from going through this suffering. And he blocks the vision of why the suffering must take place. I hope you hear me on this. If Satan gets you to see his point of view on things, you will miss out on God's coming attractions for your life, which is God's purpose and plan. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. And so Peter rebukes Jesus because his vision is blocked. Here's what he missed. 
Peter missed the fact that God's plan for the world was now about to take place. Watch this. God's son was to die and be raised again for the sins of the entire world. You see, God's plan for saving the world was to take place through a suffering Messiah, the Lamb of God. And the Messiah's death was to usher in the kingdom of God, making it possible for his followers to live eternally in the very presence of God through the gift of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Peter could only see the front end of the suffering and not the back end of salvation. But you can't get to Easter Sunday resurrection without first going through Friday crucifixion. There's going to be some kind of obstacles you're going to have to climb and get over. Now, here's the good news. Here's the good news for us Christians that Satan doesn't want you to know. But I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> if I'm going to make them mad, might as well make them all the way mad. <laughs> Jesus knows when the devil is trying to get in your head. And he has the Holy Ghost power to block it. Because Jesus knows that if Satan gets in your head, the next thing he's going to do is going to ride your back. Look at verse 33. Verse 33 says, But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. Get, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. You know what's interesting is the fact that Jesus rebukes Peter while he's looking at all the disciples, but he's talking to Satan all at the same time. He said, get behind me, Satan. He didn't say, get behind me, Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan. The message version of this text, it says, Jesus said, Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. That's the message version of this text. But you got to be careful, church, because Satan is a slickster. And he presents a very good argument all the time. You're going to have to reject him completely. That means you're going to have to be stronger than just saying, get behind me, Satan. Because sometimes that ain't going to work. Hmm. I heard about this woman who, who bought a very, very expensive dress. And when she bought it home and her husband found out how much it cost, he said, why? In the world would you buy that expensive dress? You know for a fact we can't afford that. And the woman looked at her husband. And she says, she said, but honey, baby, chicken, honey, sweetie pie. <laughs> She's buttering him up. She said, you don't understand. The devil made me do it. <laughs> She said, I tried that dress on, and the devil said to me, hey, girl, hey, that dress is you. You are looking good in that thing. You are all that and a bag of chips ranch dip. You got to have that dress, girl. And the husband said, then why didn't you just tell the devil to get thee behind me, Satan? And the wife said, well, I did tell the devil that. I said, get thee behind me, Satan. And when he got behind me, he told me I looked even better back there. <laughs> yeah, oh, well. <laughs> Satan will try his best to present a good argument because he works hard to be ready for every situation that you're going to face. We have to stay on top of things by, by trusting in the Lord and, and not let the devil interpret what the Lord is trying to say to us. 
Don't ever let the devil be your interpreter. My goodness. Secondly, God is looking for us to become mature Christians in Christ. No longer babes in Christ, but mature Christians. And can I tell you something? Immature Christians are like immature people. We tend to ride the waves of, of our emotions and, and we wear our emotions on our sleeves. But God doesn't want us to be like that. God wants us to be loving, caring, forgiving people. But when we are focused on our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we understand that God sent his only begotten son to that cross to die for my sins and for your sins. The Bible says that Jesus went to, to endure the cross so that we could have a relationship with his Father and have eternal life. The time is now for us to become mature Christians so that we're ready for the next coming attraction. And that's when Jesus is coming back. I'll leave you with this. In Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 4, the Apostle Paul gives us a perfect example of what to do to get ready for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. He says, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 Will you please stand, those who are able, for our closing hymn, Standing on the Promises. Page 374 of your hymnal. We'll sing verse 1, 3, and 4. The words will also be on your screen.
hallelujah. Uh, we do have refreshments over in the fellowship hall, so if uh, you can stay, please stay in fellowship together. Glory, hallelujah. Let us prepare for our benediction. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, more than we could ever think of or imagine. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that has taken place in the service. And as we leave this place, may we never ever leave your sight or your protection. May you be with us always, wherever we go, wherever we may be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Have a blessed week. Amen. Hallelujah.